Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, another week, another roundup. Welcome to August. We've got some good community posts. We've got some news on the Power BI side, as well as a contest. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Ruth Pizuelo's got a video over on her Kerbal YouTube channel looking at the differences between apps and app workspaces. And this is really her opinion of why you would go one way or the other. We actually did a video on the Guy in a Cube channel where we looked at it, the same thing in terms of why you would go one versus the other. But I think it's important to get different sources of those opinions because it helps you make a decision when you've got to do that in your business. So I definitely recommend take a look at this video compare it with other people's opinions about why you would go one way versus the other and then make an educated decision on your end. But I definitely am curious about your take on why you would go one way versus another. So leave that down in the comments below and let us know. I'd love to talk about that. <laughs> Melissa Coates over at Blue Granite's got a blog post looking at why shared data sets are critical to implementing Power BI. And I agree, shared data sets are kind of a revolutionary thing where we can reuse a given data set across workspaces and break down those data silos. We know that Patrick hates data silos, so this is great. Melissa does a great job of walking through what are shared data sets and looking at the advantages versus the disadvantages, you know, pros and cons of why you would wanna use those. And I think there are great cases in the business where, you know, they're very useful and there's other situations where you may, where you may not want to actually use those. But Melissa does a great job of walking through that and showing you how they work, why they work and what those pros and cons are. So if you're not very familiar about shared data sets or you wanna maybe figure out why I would use one versus not using one, check out this blog post. It's down in the description below. I've got a link as well as links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Forrester came out with their Forrester Wave, and this is a report that looks at different enterprise BI platforms. So if you're familiar with the Gartner report, this is very similar, but it's done by Forrester. And they came out showing that Power BI is at the top of the game. From a business perspective, if you're looking for reasons why we should go Power BI versus another platform, this is definitely a report you should consider along with Gartner's report as well. Those are things that can help you understand pros and cons of different platforms and help you with adoption and decisions of which way to go. One thing I love is the quote that they had in this, which is talking about Power BI being a killer platform. And it is, in my opinion, and I'm biased. So check it out down in the description below. It's a good report to read. We got a Power BI developer roundup for June and July. So everything that happened in the developer space in those two months, and there was a lot of stuff. One of the big items called out in there is that service principle usage is now generally available. And if you're developing a Power BI embedded application, I highly recommend you use a service principle versus an actual user account. Another big thing in this blog post is the announcement of embedded paginated reports. If you're using paginated reports, you can now use the embedded APIs to actually embed those in your application. It's huge. A lot of people were waiting for this. The other thing I'll call out is just what I mentioned in last week's roundup about there being a PowerShell script now that you can use to help gauge will your premium capacity or your Azure Power BI embedded capacity hold up to what it is that you need. So it's a way of, of doing some testing, load testing, things of that nature on your capacities to gauge what it is you're gonna run. There's a lot more in this blog post, so be sure you read the whole blog post. Again, links down below. There is a Power BI contest available for you to participate in. The blog post highlights an activity where Hacking STEM and NASA got together and produced a report based on radiation information where they look at what's the differences between what we get from a radiation exposure perspective on Earth versus the astronauts in space, which I thought was really cool. So this contest is around you getting data and providing some educational value based on a given topic. The ask is that this topic be centered around STEM, but it isn't necessarily a requirement, that's just the preference. The deadline for this contest is September 6th, so you've got less than a month to get this done. Be sure to check out the blog post for all the details and requirements for doing this contest as well as publishing it so that you can actually enter. All the details are in the blog post, links down below. 
All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.